Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastry. Today, I want to show you guys some lathing and give you some lathing tips. Why? Because even on our websites, if you go to it, we show you guys how to lath. You can save a ton of dough. Lath it yourself and then call us. We'll do the scratch coat, the brown coat, the color coat, however many coats you need. Five coats if necessary. Uh, my buddy Dan here, he did the, uh, the lath here. Now, Dan, he only, he said, I said, how long did you review the videos? He said, a little over an hour. You guys take two hours, maybe three. Because <laughs> now we got a few things right and a few things wrong. Now, um, I looked at this over here. If you can bring that camera over here, Jay. I looked at this wall right here and I said, dude, you put the, the wire on backwards. And he said, how, how can you tell that? I said, it's flat. And then I noticed the staples. Okay, number one, guys, as you unroll the lath, I mean, this is, your, you can call this stucco netting, lath, a lot of names for it. You put it on as it unrolls. Why do you put it on as it unrolls like this? You, you, you unroll it. Let me get this caulking off here for a second. You unroll it, and that's how you put it off. And that, this becomes self-furred. But if you put it backwards, you only have 2%. Furred. That's like putting, say if you're doing concrete and you have rebar. Generally with rebar you put dobies on it, little pieces of wood or uh, concrete. And so the, stuck, the concrete goes under the dobies and above it. So at say three inches or four inches, the, the concrete is below it and above it. Here, if you put the lath on backwards or you put too many staples, and how many staples are you supposed to use? A stud here, a stud here, a stud here. Every 16 inches is a stud. You just put one row on the stud every six inches. And if you get gung-ho, and a lot of people do this, a lot of licensed general contractors, we do a lot of work for general contractors, and one of the main things they do is they get gung-ho with the staples, not knowing or believing. They think, well, if I put more staples, it's better. Not necessarily, guys. That's only if you're drinking beer. No, kidding. If you put more staples, what it does is it flattens the wire so flat, it's like taking rebar, throwing it in the mud, and then putting the concrete above it. It's useless. So what Jay and I generally do, and we, we've already done this, is, and if you guys find it, just pull it out. You don't have to take the wire off. Just pull it out a little bit. Now, we've already gone over this uh, shed uh, for about an hour just doing this. Just pulling everything out. And you might look at it and say, well, it doesn't look out. But if you push your finger here, you could see it's out. It's, we've yanked it all everywhere out to give it a self-fur. And now what happens if you over-staple it? Well, two, uh, 30 years ago, we did a house in Tiburon up on Gil Martin. And we got gung-ho. And we put a lot of staples. And they, they didn't have the installation. So the inspector came out, I guess it was 30, 35 years ago. And he says, Cut, break them all down. And so what we'd had to do is, is just flatten them. Why flatten them? Because now it gives a better bind. And if you pull them out, you create a lot of holes, guys. So you don't have to replace the lath and you don't have to pull the staple. Just before you do the insulation, flatten them out. I'll show you a couple other things, um, too. Like if you're going to place um, a J trim, Usually put it under the paper. He's got this all set nice, and the corners are flat. I usually tell all the contractors we work for, the general contractors, the GCs we call them, I say, guys, do the paper and the wire, do the membrane, watch our videos if you don't know, uh, because we're happy to come in and just do the cement work and teach you guys how to do the, the lath work. So most of the GCs I work for, I tell them, don't do the corners, guys, because that takes a little bit of practice. How fast can I do a corner or anybody who's knowledgeable? Real quick. This corner, it looks straight and nice and pretty, but it's a little bit off because it has to be flush with this one. This one here is out an inch. So this has to be out an inch. So technically, I put this one on here. Now this is flat. This is a half inch. I'll put this on and I'll adjust for the... Um, the other half inch. We put that guy right there and I can use a gun, the compressor, 
but it's too much work to set it up. Just for example, you could use nails too, guys. These are just roofing nails. That works. You put them on. I'd put them every six inches, but now this aligns with this uh, so that when the stucco is placed on here, it'll be one inch thick right here. Then this got aligned with that. This here, the weep screen, guys. I mean, this is not super important, but as a rule, we cut them out of 45. That way, this aligns with that. All Everything has to align. Both sides have to align or should align. But we're just doing a base coat here. That's a scratch and a brown, and then we're coming back to do a color uh, coat. But I just wanted to mention, guys, some of the basics of uh, doing your own paper and wire. And if you're going to do your own paper and wire, you use your weep screeds. You use two layers of paper. You use 17 gauge wire or 18 gauge wire. Don't buy the 20 gauge. That's for tile or chicken coops. And yeah, I used to have chicken coops. So he's got the he's got the right everything. He he saved himself a lot of time, a lot of dough, and. He just purchased some equipment that he needed anyhow. I mean, some of these uh, lightweight uh, of this equipment he used for other purposes, and he built a lot of other different things, so it came in handy. But anyway, I wanted to and sh show you guys just you laugh it, call us, or call somebody similar to us. In fact, personally, I like to plaster better than I like to laugh, and I've laughed hundreds of buildings in my time. So we wanted to point that out to you guys. This is just a quick, um, quick consultation type video about how to laugh and then call us or somebody else to do the plaster work. Anyhow, anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. We thank you for watching and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. Hi folks, Jason here. And I'm here to tell you something you probably already know. That like most content creators on YouTube, my dad and I are members of the Amazon Affiliates program. What does that mean? That means that we can show and link you to some of the most commonly used tools in the plastering trade on Amazon, like our hawks and trowels, scoops, floats, and some of the other things, our battery operated tools for breakout and cutting, etc. Now, if you buy those tools from those links, we earn a small percentage of that. That allows us to keep making these videos and keep putting out quality content for you folks to enjoy. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching and from the entire Giordano family, We'll see you on the next one.